What's up my friends? How's it going today? My name is Carpo, for anybody who doesn't know. Because whenever I make a video on my channel here, I usually just say hey everybody, but whenever I make a video about either Kratom or Cannabis, I always have to introduce myself because I know that a lot more people are watching those videos. And that's kind of where I wanted to start out here. That my most popular, most of my videos maybe get a couple hundred views on YouTube. It's nothing. My video about CBD has, I think, over a hundred thousand. And one might think, well, why don't you make more videos about CBD to get more views? And my response to that would be, because it's not about views, it's about information. And it's just like my Kratom channel, or Kratom videos, rather. I had a channel kind of dedicated to my Kratom business for a while. And I thought, well, there's only so many things you can say about Kratom. If there's no new news, I'm not going to make a bunch of shit up just to get views. No new news, no new views. Uh, that's funny. I didn't even think about that. So anyhow, um, I wanted to make this video today. I've taken quite a few notes today about this. Because of my other uh, CBD video, I have a couple, but that main one is called the CBD Ripoff Report. And uh, it was about my experience of saying, you're getting ripped off. And how I've seen people who are saying, well, I want something that's going to cure my anxiety, my pain, all my problems. And CBD is this magic answer. And here I am, biting my tongue, as a guy who is a major cannabis advocate for the past 30 years almost. <laughs> and I've been smoking pot for almost 30 years now. And in that time, I have... In my senior year, I wrote a report about cannabis without even using any research. And I actually got a B on it. Uh, I had enough in my head here because I was so interested in these things. In 1994, I wrote a, a, a senior paper talking about CBD and the potential benefits in the future. So, I'm no newbie to this shit. It's that I'm embarrassed by the CBD market. I'm embarrassed by what's become of cannabis, and I hate to admit it. Growing up in the 90s, uh, at least being a teenager in the 90s, smoking cannabis was a novelty. We bought cannabis for about $40 an eighth maybe $280 an ounce. And after a while, it got up to 45 and even $50 for a little while. The other day, I stopped at a cannabis store in Oregon, and they had a sign out front said, $30 ounces. I went in there. I actually looked at it and checked it out. Uh, the irony is that I actually ended up buying first a eighth, one-eighth of an ounce of Super Silver Haze because it's a good good sativa strain and for $30 and then afterwards I asked him you know I was like oh I didn't you have $30 ounces let me see and I was like that's decent I'll take it and he's like I'm sorry I already sold you an eighth you can only buy an ounce at a time and uh, this is kind of an irrelevant story but I uh, I was disappointed I wanted to send my wife in to get it and, and uh, she was uh, she she had lost her ID so I was like oh well it doesn't matter. I live in Washington. So what I wanted to say, in Washington state here, we were the first state to legalize cannabis. But the worst part about it is that nobody else had laid out the groundwork yet. So it's, we are the first state to legalize, but the only state where you can't grow your own cannabis at home. And that's a dying shame because about four years ago, I was growing uh, with a medical card. I said, well, even though it's legal, you can't grow here. And uh, so I'm going to get a medical card and grow it anyway. And for my uh, sciatic pain that I had from carpentry, I went out, and went out and got a card and started growing weed. I was growing indoor and outdoor. And for about two years, I was growing a strain called Harlequin Tsunami. It was a crossbreed between two different strains. And if you're a CBD person, you may have heard of uh, White, or uh, not White Widow, Charlotte's Web. Sorry, I'm thinking about different spiders. Isn't that funny? 
Um, <laughs> Charlotte's Web was a, a high CBD strain that a lot uh, that a girl named Charlotte, I guess, it saved her life. She had seizures, and um, it's unfortunate that the CBD community latches onto this seizure thing as saying, "Well, you're trying to kill children by not allowing them to have CBD." This is a factor, but very few people who use CBD use it for seizures, but those who do can get it. Um, you know, I've gotten five minutes into this video, it says, and I haven't even gotten to the subjects I wanted to talk about. There is so much to talk about in the cannabis world that it's often difficult because you want to be supportive of the community, but you also want to call out all the bullshit. Uh, because of that CBD video I made, I've had several different people ask me if I want to, whether it's advertising or doing a, you know, a, a review for a product or whatnot. And, and I tell everybody the same thing. People wanted to send me vaporizers and all kinds of shit. And I said, you know, I'm not a guy you can buy off with stuff. You know, it's cool, but I, I, I tell everybody the same thing in their emails if they send me that. I said... Look, I said, I will review your product, but I'll be brutally honest about it. And uh, most of the time, they don't even send anything. They want somebody who's going to be an affiliate marketer. And that's why the whole CBD cannabis community disgusts me. Because it's a bunch of affiliate marketing and people who want to sell shit with fancy packaging. Um, most of the CBD products on the market are like 40 milligrams a dose at most. Some more, but... In the studies that were done on CBD, the therapeutic doses were between 200 and 1200 milligrams, which is between a fifth and over a gram of pure CBD, for depending on the condition. Well, if you're getting one fifth to one tenth to one twentieth of the dose that's therapeutic, then what good is it? Basically, what they're saying is that, you know, the, the product that I was sent was this, and I haven't reviewed it. I'm not going to talk about the company name. I'm not going to share the company name because that wouldn't be fair. I tried it today, um, but I asked the company, I said, you said you were going to send me a CBD extract, uh, and you wanted me to test it. And I said, that's fine, but it says hemp extract on it, 1,200 milligrams. And on the website, it says CBD extract, 1,000 milligrams. And they informed me in, through email that uh, it's a hemp extract, that it's actually a thousand milligrams of CBD, but there's 200 milligrams of other cannabinoids or whatnot. And I said, okay, that's fair enough. I can, you know, I can believe that might be true, but it's not stated on the package. There's no CBD content whatsoever. And there's a thing about get a free gift now, $50 value. Now, if the person out there who gave me this is watching, you know, no offense. I'm just trying to be honest with marketing tactics. I get it. But uh, uh, it's, it's an interesting product. It has uh, orange oil and uh, peppermint oil as well. It smells like peppermint. But here's the kicker. This little bottle sells for $129. If they think that I'm going to recommend this on my channel as something that's worthwhile, I have to say, let's do the math. A thousand milligrams of CBD. I grew a strain of Harlequin Tsunami. Now, first off, this is hemp derived, which is different. Hemp is cheap. Flower is just flower. Plants are plants. Now that this product is legal, it's not a big issue about legality or whether or not you're going to get busted by the feds. Uh, that's not an excuse we can use anymore. And the price of cannabis in the past was based upon that. The fact that you could get busted. You were getting paid for your risk of growing the cannabis. Uh, with the current market, that's not the case anymore. Um, the cannabis that is being sold... Like, for example, like I said, for two years I grew Harlequin Tsunami. I still have a lot of it. And I'm still waiting to meet somebody I can trust to process it for me and turn it into CBD uh, isolate, or at least extract. I prefer whole plant extracts. But this weed is a couple of years old, so I'm uh, debating how I'm going to go about it. But the point being that 
I did the math on this. A thousand milligrams of CBD. Let's say the pot I was growing, Harlequin Tsunami, is 12% CBD. So let's just drop it even to 10, you know, which, you know, gives some leeway. 10% CBD. So that would mean to get 1,000 milligrams. Okay. I, I haven't done the math here. Um, you've got 10% CBD in the, in, in the cannabis. To, to get 1,000 milligrams would be, what, 100 grams of cannabis? Is that right? Wait. Yeah. I think, let's just say 100 grams or whatever. Or <laughs> if I get into the math, then I'll, I'll get confused because it's, it's, it's not worth it right now. But uh, it came out to several thousand dollars per, uh, for a few ounces of cannabis, you know, that, that it required to make this. But that was if it was made with bud. Um, uh, let's just say they're turning $300 worth of cannabis into three grand or 10 grand worth of CBD tincture. But the problem is that it's an unregulated, it's often made from hemp. I'm not saying this product in particular, I'm just talking in general about CBD. It's important. There's a lot of bullshit going on out there. There's a lot of marketing, fancy packaging, and people saying, look, this will help everything. And me understanding medicine, herbs, placebo, nocebo effect, uh, I can't inform people enough to be cautious about what you're buying. And I don't think that any product is worth several thousand dollars per ounce. Like, some of these, if you do the math on what you're getting, then you can see you're getting ripped off. But if you don't understand the product, you'll buy it anyway. And people are desperate. They want anything that will help them with anxiety, depression, pain. These are the three main things that everybody's looking to cure. And I'm going to tell you, as, as an herbalist, as a, what I consider an herbalist, I'm fascinated with herbs, medicine. I study everything I can about them. There is no magic bullet. If there was, it would have been discovered. You know, everybody is unique, and it doesn't even work for everybody. But um, here's where it gets interesting. There's a product that came out last year. It was called Epidiolex. It's from a company in the UK called GW Pharmaceuticals. Now, they made this product because they can, because they're in the UK and not in the US. Once they had a CBD-based medicine, they got it approved by the FDA in the U.S. to distribute. Within two months of this product being declared on the market, the uh, DEA reduced CBD from a Schedule 1 to a Schedule 5. So there are a lot of people out there talking about this farm bill saying, well, they've reduced the, you know, oh, they made it a different schedule, and oh, we're finally making progress on CBD. Sure, because the pharmaceutical companies decided to finally fucking patent it and get away with it. You just got to do the math a little bit here. It's pretty sad where we're at that it's not until a major company with shareholders declares, we want this legal, that it becomes legal. There's no coincidence here. It's within two months. The interesting thing about Epidiolex, the CBD-based medicine that's supposed to help people with seizures, costs thirty-two thousand five hundred fucking dollars a year. And so, little girls and boys who are suffering from seizures and shaking on the floor, their parents are going to have to pay thirty-two thousand fucking dollars to afford this medication because of one greedy pharmaceutical company that's patenting something. What's interesting is that. They made a rule that said, you can't speak up against this company, but not only, or I should say, you can't. No U.S. company is allowed to do any studies comparing U.S. CBD grown, grown CBD or any CBD products to their Epidiolex. And they don't even tell you what's in it. So, you know, maybe I'm a little hasty. I, maybe I'm being uh, cynical about, uh, you know, the fact that there's a, finally an amazing CBD product out there. Wow, that's great. But let's find out what's in it and why it costs 33000 fucking dollars a year, you know. Um, one of the most unfortunate things is that people can't talk about it. They can't speak up about the problems because 
there are issues with the banks. They're afraid of the banks. The banks won't deal with cannabis vendors. I've had that problem as a Kratom vendor, and I've been defeated over and over. I'm afraid my bank's going to find out. That's why I don't take e-checks. You know, I can only take checks and money orders. But um, you, if anything's under review by the FDA or DEA, or it's considered a suspicious product, or you know, potential for abuse, they, you know, these the banks and PayPal, like which terminated my account. PayPal terminated my uh, business account and held my money for six months, like three thousand dollars. I had no way to buy a new product, and I almost gave up on my business. I was like, this is fucking ridiculous, you know. I'm mad about it, but there's nothing I can do about it except inform people. But that's the way the banks operate. That's the problem cannabis vendors face, but you can't speak up about it because then you're afraid they're going to find out about what you're doing. Even though with Kratom vending, it's, it's still legal, even though on the federal level, cannabis is illegal. And that's pretty messed up. So <clears throat> there's a lot of... Um, red tape around the uh, uh, the problem is that the US is very behind in healthcare we don't take care of our people we don't even do any research into the future of medicine and we refuse to look at plant products because there's no patent to be made on it and uh, you cannot market a drug that's in review as a nutritional supplement so now that CBD is being investigated as a medicine and it's been patented by this company, you can't sell it as a supplement anymore. There's a big gray area there they're trying to work out. So um, I, I'm sorry for all the rambling. I had a couple drinks before making this because I thought it would make it easier. Uh, a glass of wine anyway. But it's gone now. Gotta be honest. The last few notes I have are that I was thinking about topicals. A lot of people talk about topicals like creams, lotions, and all these things. I want anybody who wants to use CBD for pain to know that topicals only work regionally. They work locally on the area, according to the people that use them. Uh, they claim that rubbing the lotion on the area can help, but the problem is that they're mixing CBD with things like Arnica, or like peppermint oil, or Melaleuca oil. Things that already on their own cure pain. So the idea of whether or not CBD is actually curing the pain, the amount that they're giving you, honestly, I'd say try the natural, you know, just some salves by themselves first before you think that CBD is this miracle cure. Um, if you're going to take it and you need CBD and you want to try it, I think that the best method would be sublingual, which means that you take it in a tincture form and take it under your tongue. Hold it there for a couple minutes, allow it to absorb into your mucous membranes, and then you will get more through your bloodstream that way. If you have to take it orally, take it with some fatty acids, or milk, or butter, something that's going to help to help it digest, because accordingly that's what assists it. Um, smoking it is the option. I've got a couple pounds of this random, you know, uh, I used to have all this extract that was uh, made from the, the Harlequin Tsunami that I mentioned. I ran out of it eventually, but it was the weirdest thing because you'd take this huge chunk of hash and you'd put it on a bowl and nothing would happen. You'd smoke it. And uh, before I came out even to make, you know, earlier, bef I, I smoked a bowl of that stuff. And it's weird because you smoke a whole bowl of it and you don't feel anything. But you're like, well, it's CBD. That's why. Because... Harlequin Tsunami was 12% CBD and less than 1% THC. It was a very specific strain to Portland, Oregon. And, uh, uh, yeah, you could confirm it when you smoked it. You're like, this is definitely weed, but I'm not getting high off of it. And I thought, this is a miracle herb, so I grew it for a couple of years. And uh, then I started doing a little more research and saying, okay, it is good for certain things, but people want to market it as a cure-all. And it's not. But... Sorry to burst your bubble if you think that it's going to like solve all your problems, but that's just the way it is. So, the thing is that when I was growing that cannabis, I was growing bud. High quality bud. A lot of the stuff that's being sold on the market, it's hemp. 
hemp derived and uh, that's what this is hemp extract and to believe to be brutally honest I don't put much faith in hemp extract I don't put much faith in anything that doesn't put the actual amounts on the bottle of CBD or other ingredients if I was going to promote a product god damn it I want to make sure that I put on there what's in it you know at least know what's in it but um, the reason I say that is if it was THC you'd feel it but if it's CBD you can't tell there was a company that got um, in trouble for putting a synthetic cannabinoid in their product which was a synthetic cannabinoid that mimicked THC and a bunch of people got sick I'm not saying any other company does that but the fact that it happened shows that there are unscrupulous vendors who really are just out to make a buck and the people that can afford to do fancy packaging and big advertising those are the ones who honestly I found you have to watch out for they're the ones who care the least about the consumer they're the ones who have the least to lose they have good lawyers huge corporations that own these major cannabis industries and you don't know who to trust anymore so sorry to sound cynical or or you know maybe uh, downtrodden about the whole thing but there are still trustworthy vendors and people out there it's just a matter of seeking them out and not just buying the first product that looks good um, remember it's just a flower and you know the startup cost of a company so many people use it for marketing advertising packaging I would say, when I looked at a website that was talking about CBD, it said, you know, how to start a CBD company or something. And I was like, hey, I wonder what this says to people. And it said, uh, basically, it was everything about how to start your company, how to market it, how to sell it, how to make it look good. Nothing on the entire page about how to get a good or source a good product. So it seems like in the marketing world, nobody really gives a shit about whether a product's effective or not. So that's my kind of information from me to you hope it helps not to sound like an asshole but that's the reality of it um, ask for paperwork ask for tests any legitimate company who sells a high quality high expense CBD product should be able to send you a copy of their lab reports from their extract or something you know at the very least you know I mean that's something people should expect other than that, you're not going to feel any real effects off CBD. And you don't know if your anxiety reduction is placebo. And I don't want to be the guy who says, oh, I'm going to ruin your placebo effect. But be aware. Just be aware. Be cautious. You know, uh, know that what you're paying is worth it. Because it's frustrating. It's frustrating for all the honest business people in the world to watch what happens in the market. And to wonder, you know, how can this person charge this much for this product? And uh, I'll just tell you this. the uh, I don't remember which organization tested, but they tested over, I think, 13 different CBD products. And only two of them contain the stated levels. So um, you can always send your product into a lab. It, let's put it this way. If you're going to be a long-term consumer of CBD, and you think it's something that helps you, and you know it's something that helps you, then buy a product from your vendor, send it in, and have it tested. It might cost 40 bucks, but if you're spending 40 to 100 bucks a bottle, it makes sense to go in and have it tested and see if it really contains what it says. So uh, that's about the only advice I can offer, because honestly, it's the Wild West out there. CBD has no regulation now and it's making it harder like I, I have mixed feelings about herbs and supplements because on one hand I say people should be able to sell whatever they want on the other hand I see snake oil and I don't know which is more important it's a complicated life talk to you all later just be cautious be aware and of course if you have any specific questions you can email me but I or message me here but I don't uh, I don't know about specific products because I don't branch out and try random products. I'm just paranoid about it. Talk to you all later. Be well.